Excellencies, Your Eminence, our Lord Bishops, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you all once again. And uh, any moment now we'll start. We're starting to celebrate a man who has touched so many lives across board, irrespective of your tribe and color, your interests, so long as he's humanly and divinely motivated, he is there for you. And as our own pious, our own pious, Chukwemeka, Ezife, C-O-N, Okwadike Ndibo. The choir is still ready to render more songs. We're looking forward to having you. Meanwhile, it's my pleasure to let you know that the former secretary to the Federation and the former president of the Nigerian Senate, His Excellency Senator Pius and Yim Pius is here in the house. I also have spotted that His Excellency, the former Southeast President, well, I call him Vice Chairman of People's Democratic Party, PDP, Nze Ozichuku Fidelis Chuku is here. I am taking this challenge from the point where I am, not in any particular order. And if I must breach protocol, this is house of God. I know everybody is equal, but then there are things that we have to do. It's also my pleasure to let you know that the chairman of the Chelsea group, Chief Pat Chidolue, is also in the house. And I will take it. The man that made it possible for me to go to Akwaibom State, when he was the governor and was there for eight years, architect Obong Atta is also in the house. The former governor of Akwaibom State. I can also just tell you that the chairman of this gathering today so many things any human being cannot do at his own level begging for people to participate asking for everything to be done in orderly My pleasure to let you know that the chairman who assembled people here together, His Excellency Dr. Oki Modo, is also in the house. You're welcome, Your Excellency. I also know that the man who redirected the face of the police commission, the man who made it possible for a lot of people to at least have school set, if not a graduate, before he get into the police force, who really re-engineered, refactored things into existence. Chief Simon Okeke Ochindo is here. While we are still getting on, the man who's a civil servant, I'm getting more names, I'm calling the ones that are on my head. A little civil servant who came from nowhere as a teacher, only for him to wake up in the morning and get his name on radio that is now a director of public utilities in the office of Okwadike several years ago and become a DG. Is here. Distinguished Senator Ugochugu Oba. God bless you. I also have our own brother, the former Minister of Health, Dr. Tim Menekaya is also here. You're welcome. Please protocol people. Let me have more names. I also know that um, the former DG of Voice of Nigeria, Osita Okechuku, is also here with us. My pleasure it is to know that the bilingual 
the man who speaks French, speaks English, Spanish, speaks Igbo Yoruba, and speaks Mbise. Dr. Paddy Hikemde Njoko is also here. On behalf of the first dynasty led by Uncle Ron, it's a pleasure to welcome you once again. And we will, now the program is here. Dr. Quenna, please, your attention is needed where I am. You are far right. You are far right. So we can take it off from there. My highly honored and highly revered brother on the microphone, Eber Young, is also here, ever looking young. He will come at the appropriate time, and I tell you sincerely that this is an exhibition of passion, trust, and love for a man who
ascribe unto you. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Shall we stand as we say the opening prayers? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this privilege of gathering here in your house to celebrate the life of your son, Chief Chukwemeka Ezeife, with prayers, with songs, with praises. We now commit this service into your hands and we pray that everything we are going to do here in your name, let them come to you as a sweet smelling savour. And in all, may you take the glory as we declare this service open in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Thank you. May be seated. God bless you, sir. We go to the next in the program, opening song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross by Enuma Ezife. Please. If you check the program, maybe your name is around, please you have to be around so that we can be fast. God bless you. Welcome, everybody. 
um, our opening song, like they said, is in the program on page three. When I survey the wondrous cross. Okay, please, can everybody stand up? Okay. Thank you. And we'll sing this together. Thank you so much. You are welcome, all of us here. Thank you for being here. If you are not here, I wonder what will happen. Thank you and thank you again. It's time for us to acknowledge all of us. If you hear your name, if you don't hear your name, please, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, my name and my wife, we are here. Majors Ibuangusi. We have the Salvation Army. Tim Brellis and YP, they are there. Can you rise for recognition, the YPs and their leaders? Can you shout, Amen? We have the songsters, Ebu led by songster leader Femi Adegun. Songsters, would you like to rise for recognition? Say hallelujah. Thank you. We have the Ebu Brass Band led by a great man. The bandmaster, our brother 
Ugochuku Monano and the band, brass band, would you like to rise up for recognition? Say hallelujah to the house. Thank you so much. We have the CSM is here, who happens to be the second in command as far as Abuja Central Corps is consigned. Our dear Sergeant Major, <laughs> Christopher Omotoloya, I'm not learning it. Can we shout one hearty hallelujah to welcome him? Thank you. We have the coordinators that is coordinating our work in Nyanya. Our dear brother and our dear sister, they are here. They are our coordinators helping God's work in Nyanya. Um, our dear brother and our sister, Essien, uh, they are here. Can we shout one hearty hallelujah? We have our divisional PRO, who happens to be the commanding officer in our branch at Suleja. So our brother Achibon, can we shout one hearty hallelujah to welcome him? Thank you. So we move forward. In the Northern Division of the Salvation Army, we have somebody who is piloting, who is heading, who is telling us what to do. And we must follow it up. Our divisional commander and divisional directors for women ministry, they are ably here, represented by nobody. They are here in person. Majors Abasido and Diboro Udongu, the divisional commander. Can we rise up, please, to welcome them with three hearty hallelujah. One, two, go. Number two. Number three. Thank you. We have. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, we want to recognize and welcome our dear father, the great leader in this Abuja, in this FCT. You've been hearing his name over the air of very many places. Permit me, great people of God, to recognize and introduce to us our dear Archbishop Emeritus of Abuja, John Cardinal Oneinka. Please, can we rise up to welcome him? Can we rise up to welcome him? Please, can we rise up to welcome him? May God bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. We want to recognize Ambassador Bishop Dr. Chinere Ilochi. Ma, can we shout one hearty hallelujah to welcome her? God bless you. We want to recognize and welcome our great man of God, Archbishop 
Sylvanus Ophelisa. You are welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Please permit me again to welcome Bishop Silas Success Okwa. Please, sir. May God bless you, sir, in Jesus' name. At the same time, let us welcome Bishop Prince Gabriel Obuba. God bless you, sir. You are welcome. We want to welcome Most Reverend Dr. Peter Ogunia, Archbishop of Anglican Church, Province of Abuja. Is here able represented, repre yeah, I'm coming. Able represented by Cam, is the pa Cam President. Okay, representing the Cam President, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Sorry, sir. Please, Archbishop of the African Church, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to recognize Mr. and Mrs. All of you that have not called your names. God bless you. Please, the songsters, they are ready. Songsters, please. After songsters, please, let's go to the next.
Thank you so much, the songsters, able led by Femi Adegun. May God bless you in Jesus' name. We want to go to the next. Let's hear a brief talk about Okwadike Dr. Chukwemeka Ezife. That will be done by Dr. Ogelue Ezife Ugoji. So let's welcome her. Let's appreciate God for her life. Please, let's clap more than that. If you want to clap, you clap. If you don't want to clap, I think you can. Thank you so much. Adaya, welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone. All protocols observed. So I'm supposed to give a brief talk about Okwadike. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to say that is brief for Okwadike? So here I am I just going to just read a little bit about his biography. It's not complete, but just a little bit so that we all know who we are here for today. Once again, my name is Ogelue Ezife Ugoji, the first child of Okwadike. So here we go. Bear with me. I'll try to make it as brief as possible and cut off some parts. Mr. Joshua and Miss Virginia Ezife welcome their third child their second son on November 20th, 1938, in the ancient town of Ibuku in Agwata local government, in the now Anambra state of Nigeria. That son was Pius Chukwemeka Ezife. He was one of nine children. Going on to his primary and secondary school days, he started in the Salvation Army Primary School, located very close to our home in Ibuku. And later, he went on to Holy Trinity CMS Primary School, about, which was about a mile away. After that, he went on to his uh, elementary school education in, 1960, in 1952. He progressively took uh, correspondence courses from Rapid Result uh, College, London, uh, in England. And um, in his free time, he was, he, was able to, he was able to take the exam and pass with flying colors. He then went to um, Cambridge. He, ju he just got, he got the Cambridge General Certificate of Education at that time, passing with flying colors. He further went to University of Ibadan in 1961, graduating with a second class honors degree in economics, and that was, he graduated in 1964. After that, he got employed by Nigerian breweries, which he did very well. Furthermore, he went into the government. He started working in different in different arms of government and rose all, all the way to the top. While on a program at Atodi Little Company, in, when he traveled to the United States of America in 1967, he got he had he he got trained he had the training there, and he was able to be a lecturer in economics at the Macaretti, Macaretti University. He, he was progressively, subsequently going up and up in, his, in all that he was doing, in all that he put his mind to do. Okwadike subsequently obtained an admission to study doctorate degree in economics at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States. This was facilitated by Rockefeller Foundation scholarship. Luckily for him, he found happiness when he met and married um, Nono Christiana Ezife, who, bless her soul, passed on two years ago. When the war ended in 1970, he facilitated the admission of his youngest brother to the uh, University of Massachusetts, Boston campus, and paid for his flight and his uh, United and his um, his ability to get there, and that was one of my other uncles. 
just showing how giving he was. He brought innovation and fresh ideas to the Federal Ministry of Planning and Economic Development when he was part of that and achieved upward career mobility until he reached the apex of director, then capping it off by becoming permanent secretary in 1984. That was an uncommon feat at the time. All along the way, he had held many government and prominent positions. Moving Okwadike into politics. When he retired from government, Okwadike set up an import-export business, exporting agricultural products, including cashews. He did not find business, the, um, he did not find business and the pursuit of accumulation of wealth particularly exciting. He was drawn toward a sector capable of making significant positive change in people's lives. He entered the field of politics with great hopes, aspirations, and intentions of improving the life of the common man and woman. Okwadike remained principled and did not stray away from his vision, mission, and convictions, even though he often found himself with short end of the stick. His forte was to speak truth and power, to, to speak truth regardless of the consequence. He criticized government when they deviated from, the, um, from their duty to the people. He wrote for newspapers and magazines, gave lectures, wrote books, appeared on radio and television shows, fearlessly stating his case and displeasure publicly without fear of anyone. He made time to write many books. Two books, Hoha and the Remaking of Nigeria with Progressism. We are, one of his, we are both of his favorites. He was a staunch and fearless advocate of the Igbo, of the Igbo man who had been grossly marginalized. That, and that has been since the end of the Nigerian Briafan War. And he always fought for fairness and inclusion. He believed in a Nigeria that is fair and just and finding common ground and building consensus, consensus wherever feasible. And all the major groups of the East, West, Middle Belt, and the North. He was a global person. He was comfortable with Nigeria from all corners of the Federation. Okwadike, a man of his word, a man that was very truthful, a man that was kind, a man that, no, that didn't make any, um, um, he didn't make any divisions in, amongst strata. He regarded everybody, no matter how low you were or how high you were, he would find a joke to crack with you. Okwadike was an unflinching and untiring advocate for the common man and woman. And he used his talents and limited resources to help everyone he could around him. Okwadike was a point of light and enlightenment in the darkness that challenged Nigeria, Africa, and the black people. His light, though dimmed, has morphed into many points of light in each shining, in each one shining so brightly, ever so brightly. So anyone in here that has come in contact with the Okwadike or that knew Okwadike, you have that light that he has. He put that light in you. So let it continue to shine on. Let us not forget his legacy, the person that he was, a true disciplined soul. Thank you.
Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. We are going to stand because that a particular point is not the best. So we call our sister Onyinye Ezife to come up, line up the second song in the Salvation Army songbook, 900. And get that there is a land that is fairer than the day. Thank you. The band you get ready on it. Good evening, everyone. The song is on page four. step to the next, the Bible reading, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1 to 10, by Barista Ifoma Ezife. I believe we shall win, we fight in the strength of the King. I believe we shall win. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. I'm standing here with um, Abachi Kwezife. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Our Bible reading today will be taken from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is a book of wisdom written by King Solomon, one of the wisest kings that ever lived. And we'll be reading from chapter 3, 1 to 10. To everything there's a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. To every, there, everything is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to plug up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time 
to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to read, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit had he that walketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the trivial which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. This is King James Version. Praise be the Lord. God bless you, man. I believe we have this soloist around, but we are going to give them two, two minutes, please. Please. Pascal, are you here? Stephen, uh -huh, please. And the 12th Apostle Choir, please, you get ready. And also the can. Then we go to the next Bible reading. Please, Pascal, we'll go. Stephanie Mba, 12 Apostles and the Christian Association of Nigeria, led by the ancestor Jude Nam. Pascal.
Please clap better than that. God bless you, my brother. Please we do some changes. Bear with us. Twelve apostles choir, are you around? Please, it's your time. After that, we go to Bible reading. Second Bible reading, please, so that we can be a bit fast. This is the time for 12 Apostles Choir. Please, over to you. After this, please, we have the second Bible reading by Ozue Ezife. Thank you. Please, your time is now. Twelve Apostles Choir. The same two minutes, please.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm with my brother Kuzier, and we'll be reading from Luke chapter 12. Now, for context, Luke chapter 12 is one of the scriptures where Jesus tries to balance a lot of opposing ideas. Before these verses, there were thousands impeding on him and his disciples, and he talks, starts to talk to them about warnings and encouragement. It is in this scene that someone from the crowd speaks out and says, and that's from verse 12, 13 to 21. I'll read the first verse, because here we'll read the second one, and I'll round it up. And from the crowd, one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he may divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made you a judge? Who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto him, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And the next verse. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat drink and be merry and to wrap it up this is a parable of the rich fool just for context and jesus says but unto but god said unto him thou fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee when then who shall those things be all of the things who acquire here who shall it then belong unto which thou hast provided it's a poignant question for all of us today and for all times. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God? This is King James Version, and may God bless his word. If you want you to clap, please, could you clap better? Thank you. Praise God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he was my future. And life is what I live in just because. Sing it one more time with me. Want to go? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, because he lives, all fear is gone. And living just because I might say, God, we thank you this moment for life you've given us to live till today. Thank you for today's event that you've caused us to be a partaker of this meeting. We bless your name, mighty Jehovah, for the life of our Father that you've called to glory. Thank you, O God, for members of the family. Thank you for everyone sitting here today. We give you praise, O God, for what you have done. Thank you for Nigeria. You've given us peace. We give you praise because you are worthy. We want to listen to you now and speak to us, O God. Ask, O God, that you speak to us in a language we will all understand. 
Bless us through your word. Thank you and take over, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Can you just say loud, amen. I want to thank God today for this opportunity I have to speak this evening to the glory of God. I want also to recognize our archbishops and bishops here in this place. I want to tap grace for them also to speak to this great congregation today. In few moments, that the Lord is going to guide us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret this word more unto us today. And we will not leave this place the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. That is where I take my text. Isaiah 38, verse 1. I read from what I have here. Thus said the Lord, said thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I repeat again. Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I want to share with us this evening on a topic I titled Preparation for Death. Preparation for Death. Brethren, there's a high need for us to prepare for death. And this is God's instruction. Not man. There's nothing a man will want to do in this life without preparation. Some prepare for a journey. Some prepare for business. Some prepare for marriage. Some prepare for burial. Even as we are preparing for burial of our father. Some prepare for education. Some prepare for employment. Some prepare for examination. But a lot of people do not prepare for death. But today, God is asking me to tell us that we need to prepare for death because one day it will come. It doesn't ring bell. It comes at any point it wants to come. And you cannot stop it. I cannot stop it. We have to prepare for death. From Luke's gospel that was read to us just a few minutes ago, chapter 12, we saw a rich man who did not prepare for death, but was preparing for the life, for enjoyment of this life. Perhaps he felt he is rich. He has arrived. He has so many things in stock for him. Bible says, he said one day, my soul, don't worry. Take life easy. Eat and drink. Enjoy yourself. You don't have a problem. The Bible says that night, that night, the Bible says God called him, you fool. This night, your life will be taken from you. And that night, the man died. Why did Jesus call him a fool? A fool in the sense that because he did not prepare for another life. Someone tell somebody beside you, tell him there is another life. Tell someone beside you, tell him there is another life. This man did not prepare for another life. He thought life is just here on earth. He never knew there's another life beyond this life. He did not prepare. That was why Christ called him a fool. So anyone who thinks that life is only here on earth and does not prepare for for the life to come is a fool in the sight of God. Jesus did not condemn riches. Jesus did not condemn possession or wealth. But what he was talking here is that we should not put our faith in those things to secure our life here and our life beyond. That's where we got it wrong. I still believe even after standing on this exalted altar that a rich man can still make heaven. A wealthy man can still make heaven. Depending on how you handle your wealth, depending on how you look at it, if you know that God is the giver of all good things, you will know how to handle them and you can make heaven. Even if you are a rich man, somebody shout hallelujah. There are times money 
in this life become useless. There are times money become useless. At that night, the world, the money that this man gathered became useless. The money could not save him at that night. There are times we don't have to depend on those things. God is our source. Amen. God is our source. That is what we have to know. Now, the question is, why should we prepare for death? Why? One, death is inevitable. No discharge in this war. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, and not to that judgment. That means death is inevitable. No man can run away from it. No discharge in this war. Point number two, why we should prepare for death, is that death comes unnoticed. It comes unnoticed. It comes when you are not prepared. It comes like a thief in the night. That is how death comes. It comes unnoticed. That is why me and you should prepare for death. I come to Luke Gospel chapter 12, verse 20 that we read. Point number three. You don't know when you are going to die. That is the reason we must prepare for death. You don't know when you are going to die. Nobody here knows when he's going to die. No matter how spiritual you may think you are, you don't know. You don't know. It comes unnoticed. And you don't know of exist that matters. But what matters is the destination you are going after the exit. So, my brethren, live simply. It's all about God. Preparation for death. How do you prepare for death? One day it will come. One day it will come. You can't run away from it. I pray may God help us to understand this word in the name of Jesus Christ. God is talking to us today. I believe God is speaking to someone today. If you don't hear God speak, it does not mean that God is not speaking. He's speaking every day. And I believe today God has spoken to someone. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 22, He who has and hear, let him hear what the Christ said to the church. I want to pray for the family this moment. The time of prayer is coming. I want to encourage the family. Envoy Rob, SFA, I want to encourage you. You were so close with your brother, but your brother has left you. But I'm telling you today that you are not alone. God is with you. God will protect you. God will guide you and the entire family. May God help us in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my bishop. God bless you, my divisional commander. The brass band, able led by our great brother, BM Ugo Monano, please, over to you. I want to use this opportunity also to recognize Ezi Bowan of Abuja, His Royal Highness, as a doctor, sir, Uosibe. Please, sir, M-O-N, you are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, the brass band, over to you. And our sister will be ready, Evangeline, before we hear the message of hope, then we go for prayers and round up.
God bless you for making use of time and getting it right. Thank you so much. Jesus himself in the gospel of St. Matthew chapter 25. St. Paul tells us not to mourn over our dead, I quote, as others who have no hope. First Thessalonians 4.13. Dr. Isaiah lived his life as a convinced Christian of the Salvation Army tradition. He can say, again with St. Paul, I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come for me now is the crown of uprightness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to, not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. This beautiful text is from 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. St. Paul will certainly count Dr. Ezefe among those who will receive the crown of uprightness on that day. May the soul of Chief Ezefe and the soul of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in perfect peace. Amen. Please, can we give God a clap of free? Thank you so much, sir. That's very great. Okay. We're now listening to
Christian Association of Nigeria Choir, Ebu led by Dr. Jude Nam. Please, two minutes, please. Please, two minutes, please. I beg two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Christian Association of Nigeria Choir, thank you so much. We are going to welcome a message from Goodwill, yeah. 
Thank you, sir. Goodwill message from Kam Chima. Happily represent. Okay, Kam President, sorry. Kam President, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's now to welcome the goodwill message from the calm president ably represented by their father in the Lord here. Thank you. Praise the Lord. On behalf of the Christian Association of Nigeria, I stand here to represent the president of this association, His Eminence, Dr. Daniel Oko. My name is Archbishop Peter Ogumoyewa of the African Church. We are here to commemorate with the family of Okwadike Dr. Chukwemeka Pius Ezeife. By the antecedent of Dr. Ezeife, he was known as a freedom fighter, a very conservative man, a traditionalist. By this, he was born into the Salvation Army Church and he died as a member of this church. That simply shows that he was a highly principled man. Ordinarily, some Christians have jumped from one church to the other. Before they passed on, they must have belonged to so many denominations. But because of his stance for, for discipline, he remained in his church and died in his church. And like the Archbishop Emeritus rightly said, he will receive the crown of glory at the last day. Once again, on behalf of the Christian community in Nigeria, which the current president represents, we condole with the family and we pray that the Lord will continue to uphold you all in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. I think it's time for us to rise up to share praises together and give God our able offering. Dance maybe three minutes. Hallelujah. 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 If you're happy in this house, do something for Jesus. If you're happy in the house, do something for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet as we praise God. And give our offering. Aga menye gie kele, o me mai, o me mai, I worship you. Aga menye gie kele.
name of Jesus Christ. It's time to pray for Ezefe family, please. Would you like to come out? Um, if Reverend William Okoye is here, um, can please come. If not, then we invite Bishop Silas Success. Please, sir. Would you like to come also? Please, Ezefe family, it is time for prayers. Okay, thank you. We have, you can be coming, yes, be coming small. We have two prayers for you. Um, so one is representing Reverend Williams. Then the last prayer will be said by Bishop Silas. Thank you, sir. Amen. We are praying for the family of Okwadike, Dr. Chukwemeka, Ezife, whom the Lord has called to glory. We pray. Gracious God, we give thanks and praise to you for the good and impactful life your son, Chief Dr. Chukwemeka, as if he lived during his sojourn here on earth until it pleased you to call him back to eternal rest. Precious Lord, we present the family members he left behind unto you. And we ask that you step into their lives and be a father unto them. Lord, comfort them and all that needed your comfort in this trying moment of grief. Grant them the strength and the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Reliable Father, we pray that you fill every vacuum and gap that may have been created in their lives by reason of the home call of your son, dear Father. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will direct them at every crucial point of decision in their lives as they look up unto you. May your goodness and your mercy never depart from this family. May your grace be multiplied unto them 
each second of their life in Jesus' name. Faithful Father, we ask that you keep, you preserve, and you defend them in all their life endeavors. Lord, your name is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it, and they are safe. Father, we ask that you will be a pillar of strength unto them, that you will be their rock, you will be their fortress in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever they needed somebody to talk to for direction and for advice, Lord, we ask that you will be available for them to lean on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Righteous God, we pray that the good and memorable legacy that their father left behind shall be maintained, shall be improved upon, and shall be carried further through them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. As their father has positively impacted lives, Lord, as he has impacted destinies during his life here on earth, we pray that his family shall be an extension of his hand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Their father was a voice to the voiceless. He was a defense to the defenseless. Lord, raise them and grant them even more courage to speak, O oh God, and defend the cause of justice in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I finally pray, Lord, that in process of their preparation to and fro, may your presence be with them. Grant them Johnny mercies in everything they will do. Lord, I ask that the voice of wailing shall not be heard in this family again, except as you have ordained in their very, very old age and gray hair in the name of Jesus. I stand upon the apostolic grace and unction of God in the life of his servant, Reverend Dr. William Okoye, whom I represent, and my Lord spiritual that are all seated here. And I pronounce the blessings of God upon you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. You will be what God says you will be, and your destiny shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. So, dear Lord, in the same vein, it is written, if only in this life we have hope, we of all men most miserable, I want to thank you for that which you are doing in Ezefe dynasty. I want to thank you for the life well spent. I want to thank you for the children, the family that he has left behind. Therefore, Lord, I request that your mighty hand will rest upon them. You will keep and preserve them. Deliver them from every strange happenings. Lord, dear Lord, we ask this day that that indelible footprint he left in the sand of time that these ones will maintain and sustain them in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, I pray that the rest of the activities of this uh, services, this barrier, Lord, you will guide and protect in all ramification. And I therefore, Lord, pray that you keep and preserve this family. There shall be no untimely death. No one will die without fulfilling his or her purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the good health you have given to them. Thank you for the vision you are kindling in their lives. Thank you for the direction you are offering to them. Thank you for that wish you are showering. And the blessings of heaven above. Thank you our Father for all that you are doing in this family. In Jesus most wonderful name. I Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. Thank you.